great to talk to today, uh, ranging from, from fish and, and turtles, a fair bit on, on vegetation monitoring from different aspects. We look at remote sensing um, and application of, of that. Um, Certainly the, the, the value of uh, the river and connectivity was explored uh, a fair bit and um, just the, the value of, of flooding. We looked at blackwater issues and uh, the use of that in feeding the river system. Uh, we looked at uh, the inordinate uh, issues that Parks Vic have to do when they, they manage the system um, between firewood and brumbies and uh, just a big gamut of different uh, resource issues. Um, from the point of view of, of water management, you know, where we're trying to pick out the, the aspects of, of research and where all that feeds into adaptive management on the ground. Um, so the, the, the work of, of biomass as well and um, uh, how, how flooding <coughs> affects vegetation structure, but it's also rainfall and grazing impacts as well all shapes of forests as we see it today. So really the, the range of research that was going on has been these little building blocks of course that have been you know, building up a, a bigger and, and clearer picture to the, of the forest. Some standouts to me just from memory was uh, things like uh, if you recall Lindsay Vivian's uh, mora grass mapping and just uh, the continual shrinking of the mora grass plains in, in Barma. And then Jeff Carboon showed a similar map of uh, horse grazing or, or horse um, surveys and you can nearly overlay the, the two maps. In fact the presentation I, I did was just that. <laughs> Look great, perfect correlation. <laughs> no, it, it's a pretty good correlation. Now it could be that uh, the horses are just um, obvious from the air or, or ground surveys because they're on big open plains. That could be a possibility. But certainly what we're seeing when we're on the ground is the horse activity is really concentrated on places like the Mora Grass Plains. So I think there is a, um, a true correlation there. Um, the take homes generally as well that have so far come out was uh, the value of long term monitoring. Uh, I think a lot of the talks showed uh, quite big variability in each of the talks from, from different measuring points. And the more measuring points that were, were gathered and, and presented, uh, a bit more clearer picture was, was starting to form, um, or more complexity was starting to form. And I, I think it's a, a bit like a, a television set, you know, um, where if you've only got 10 pixels or, or 10 measures, you know, the, the picture or the, the vision that you're getting is really grainy. But the more and more um, pixels is starting to appear, the pitch becomes clearer. And I think that's the same with monitoring as well and research is uh, the more we, we find out, the, well, the more you find it, you, the more you don't know, but uh, the picture starts to form a bit more clearer. And that's where natural resource management then picks it up to say, okay, if this is where we believe the systems are going, we might be able to apply water at a very specific period of time um, or a depth, a duration, a frequency, whatever it be. So the, the research will have a very practical application. So having said that, uh, today being day two, and as I was saying yesterday, we could have easily had a four day conference uh, with the amount of work and, and other research that has gone on in the past that is just as valid today. So today we're going to start off with some remote sensing work. Uh, we have Dr. Mohammed Abazar from uh, the Department of Primary Industries in Tajura, going to be presenting on uh, remote monitoring of Barma. So please welcome Mohammed.